In this video, I'm going to walk through four different ways that you can exclude or ignore files when it comes to version controlling a project of files using Git. The most common way to ignore files in the way that probably most projects out there are already doing it is with the git ignore file. This tends to show up in most projects. Um, generally, when you use some sort of project bootstrap, like uh, if you create a new Rails app, like in the instance I have here, or you know all sorts of project bootstrapping uh, scripts, they tend to include a .git ignore file. So let's take a look at the git ignore file that came with this Rails project when I created it using the Rails new command line utility. So I can say vi and git ignore, and this will open up that file in Vim. And you can see there are all sorts of things already in here. I didn't add these. They came standard with the Rails install because over time, the Rails community has decided that these are some standard things that show up across most projects that aren't going to be needed under version control. So they are specified here. Now, if I jump down to the bottom, past all of the ones that were already included, I could add my own here. So I could say I want IRB history to not ever be included when I'm doing when I'm staging my changes. So if I save that and I say get status, IRB history had been listed here and now it's not listed here. Um, despite it being an untracked file, we've told Git that we don't care about that file. So it's now being ignored. So again, this is git ignore here is the most common one. That's a way of ignoring files on a per project basis. This is going to be uh, this file is going to be included in version control. So this is a way for you to maintain a set of ignored files across a team, across a project. So only ones that you all agree on will go in here. Now, this is where we get into some of the others is for instances where where it's per person or per user. So for me, if I have um, certain files that I just always want to exclude across all of my projects, I can do a what's called a global exclude. So I tend to have a notes file like this, notes.md, that I will peel open in most of the apps that I'm working on. And that's never something that I want to commit. Um, that's something just for me to jot down some notes so I can keep track of my thinking. And so to have to you know, add that to the git ignore each time per project is tedious, and also it doesn't really belong in a team-wide git ignore. So what I do is um, if I go to my git config, and this is in my home directory, we'll see that um, in the core section, we can add something called an excludes file, and this tells git that um, whatever value this is set to, treat that as the global git ignore. And so I've sort of followed convention here and decided to use just dot git ignore, but in my home directory. And so if I um, go to that file, here we go. I've got it open, the git ignore my home directory. And the only thing I have here is notes.md. And so that's why when we did the git status, we weren't seeing this file listed, is because I've told uh, git that I never want to see that file. And we've got some case insensitivity here, but if I really wanted to be sure, I could add both of those there. I could save it, and if I do a git status, we'll again see that the notes.md file isn't showing up. Again, global exclude, that's a great way to exclude files that you never want across any of your projects on your machine. Now, there are instances where there are files that you want to included in some projects, but you never want to uh, include it in other projects. And that's where a per project uh, exclude comes in. And that is something we can do in this info exclude file that shows up in the .git directory of a given git project. So we can see here, if I say vi.git, so this is under git here is where all of the you know, internals and all of the things that Git is keeping track of, that all belongs in this subdirectory here. And if I look in info, then the only thing in info is this exclude file. And so if I open that up, we'll see it gives us a little bit of information here about what this file is. And this is, again, a place for 
us to ex exclude certain files on a per machine or per user uh, and then per project basis. So um, in here, well, let's see. If I pop back out of there, we can see I've got this IRBRC file. This is uh, perhaps a configuration file for IRB that I've um, added some personal uh, preference settings like this clear command. I don't want that to be included in um, this particular project's Git ignore, but I maybe want to uh, actually track IRBRC in another project. So because of that um, sort of conflict of wanting in some places, not others, uh, it makes it a great candidate for including in this exclude file. So I can say dot IRBRC, and I can save that. And now if I say git status, that file is no longer showing up here. Now the final one I want to show is the, the skip work, work tree flag. And this is a way of excluding files that are already tracked. Um, you have to be careful about when you use this, because um, it could certainly trip you up if you are you know, f flagging files with it that uh, end up having changes that you need. Um, but it can be pretty handy in um, a feature branch situation where uh, you don't want to think about the changes to a file during the duration of that feature. So I've got an example of that here with this development file. If I, um, if I do the diff on it, we can see that I've changed the port here. And that's not something that I want to change upstream for other users of this app. It's just something that I want, uh, want for my sort of personal workflow during this feature. So the port, while it is changed in this file, I don't really want that showing up in the, um, in the status when I'm doing git status. So what I can do is I can say git update index, and then I say skip work tree, and then I list the file. And so again, what this is going to do is it's going to flip a flag for this file that tells Git to consider this um, a file to not be uh, included when, uh, when listing things out for the work tree. So if I go ahead and execute that command, it goes successfully. And if I say Git status now, that file is no longer being listed under the set of change files ready for staging. Um, if at a certain point I do want that file included again uh, so that I can actively maintain it and commit changes to it, I can just go ahead and run a very similar command, put no in front of it, so turn that flag back off. And if I do get status, we can see that this file is now no longer ignored um, as, a, as a tracked file. So these, again, are the sort of four perhaps uh, most common ways that you're going to exclude files. I think I've listed them in sort of order of most common usage to least common usage. Uh, feel free to use a mix of them to sort of fine tune your uh, Git workflow. As, as much as possible, these allow you to remove noise when you run the git status command. And that's uh, great because you want to be able to just focus on the changes you care about and not have a bunch of changes showing up that you don't care about. Hope you found this video useful. Definitely leave any comments or questions uh, down below and hit that subscribe button if you want to uh, see more videos like this about Git and other command line tools. Thanks for watching.